ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار what comes next after ramadan this is the question that should preoccupy us now this is the question that every muslim should should be asking himself or herself what am i meant to do now now that ramadan has passed now that we have bid farewell to ramadan the first thing that we should do is make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts from us all of the fasting and the prayers and the ibada that we did in the month of ramadan that we should ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forget and forgive the mistakes that we made to overlook those mistakes and to accept from us all of the worship we offered in the month of ramadan al muhal bin al fadl rahimahullah he said that the righteous before us they would make dua for 6 months that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them life to see ramadan to experience ramadan once again but then when ramadan would pass they would make dua for another 6 months after it begging allah and asking allah to accept from them they would spend the time after ramadan never forgetting ramadan in their minds but always asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from them all the worship that they offered once Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu, he said, كُونُوا لِقُبُولِ الْعَمَلِ أَشَدَّ إِهْتِمَامًا مِنْكُمْ بِالْعَمَلِ Be more concerned about Allah's accepting your deeds than the deeds that you do themselves. Be more concerned about Allah accepting these were acts of worship than the actual act of worship itself. And then he said, أَلَمْ تَسْمَعُوا قَوْلَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Have you not heard the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah only accepts from those who have taqwa. Allah only accepts, accepts the acts from those from the muttaqin, those who are righteous. Abdul Aziz ibn Abi Rawad, rahimahullah, he said, أَدْرَكْتُهُمْ That I encountered the sahaba, I encountered the righteous before us. أَدْرَكْتُهُمْ يَجْتَهِدُونَ فِي الْعَمَلِ الصَّالِحِ I met them and they used to exert themselves in work acts of worship. They used to push themselves so much in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا فَعَلُوهُ So when they had completed those acts of worship, وَقَعَ عَلَيْهِمَ الْهَمْ Then the worry would come to them. Then the anxiety would come to them. أَتُقُبِّلَ أَمْ لَا Will these deeds be accepted by Allah or not? The next thing that we should do is make istighfar asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for the mistakes that we made in the fasting, to forgive us for all the slip-ups, all the sins that we may have committed in Ramadan. And this is the case with many acts of worship, that after a Muslim completes that act of worship, the Sharia teaches us that we should ask Allah's forgiveness for the mistakes in that worship. So for example, the Prophet sallallahu taught us that after we complete the prayer, as soon as a person makes taslim, salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum, the first thing he says is what? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Not because he has done a sin, 
but he is asking Allah's forgiveness for all the mistakes he made in the prayer. And for this reason, Umar ibn Abdulaziz, rahimullah, one of the few khulafa who was also a scholar, he was not, also, not only an emir, but he was also a scholar of the religion. When he, at the end of Ramadan, he wrote a letter to his governors and he told his governors, read this letter out to the people at the end of Ramadan. And in this letter, he told the people, Qulu kama qala abukum Adam. Say as your father Adam said, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. O oh, our Lord, we have wronged our souls. We have committed sin. And if you don't forgive us and show mercy to us, then we will be from the losers. And say as Nuh said, And if you, Allah, don't forgive me and show mercy to me, I will be from the losers. وَقُولُوا كَمَا قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ And say as Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ And Allah is the one who I hope will forgive my sins on the day of judgment. وَقُولُوا كَمَا قَالَ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ And say as Musa alayhi salam said, رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِ فَاغْفِرْ لِي O my Lord, I have sinned against my soul. I have been unjust against my soul, so forgive me. وَقُولُوا كَمَا قَالَ ذُنُّونَ عليه السلام لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين and say as Yunus عليه السلام said when he was stuck in the belly of the whale there is no one worthy of worship except you glory be to you O Allah verily I was amongst those who were wrong amongst those who were unjust to their souls so Umar ibn Abdulaziz rahimullah he commanded the people with the tradition of the Anbiya to make, make istighfar at, this, at the end of Ramadan. But some people may say, yeah, but I fasted all the days of Ramadan. I fasted all the days. I didn't eat or drink anything. Why should I be asking forgiveness? I did my fast perfectly. You may have fasted from food and drink, but the real fast is not from food and drink. The real fast is from sin. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَيْسَ الصِّيَامُ مِنَ الطَّعَامِ والشراب. That the fasting is not just from food and drink. The real fast, the real fast is from false speech and obscenity. The real fasting is from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to know the state of our fasting, just look to the state of our prayers. If a Muslim wants to know, how good was my fasting? Did I really fast from disobedience of Allah? Then just look to the state of your prayers. You know, there is a joke that once some people, they were praying Salat al-Dhuhr. They were praying Salat al-Dhuhr in a group. And the Imam made a mistake. And he only prayed three rak'ahs. So after the prayer, he turned around and he asked the people, did we pray three or did we pray four? Some said we prayed three. Some said we prayed four. Some said we're not sure. One man, he said, no, we prayed three. I'm sure of it. They said, how can you be sure? He said, because... I have four businesses and I do the accounts for each business and one rak'ah. So I finished three of my businesses. I didn't finish the fourth. So I know we prayed three. This is a joke. But many of us, we fit this description. Many of us, we are like this in the prayer. We are here physically in the prayer and our minds and our hearts are somewhere else. So if this is the state of our prayers, then what do you think is the state of our fasting? It is impossible that someone could have a prayer like this and yet his fasting, his spiritual state provides a fasting that is perfect. If we have flaws like this in the prayer, then we will also have flaws in our fasting. And because of this, when a Muslim reaches the end of Ramadan, on Laylatul Qadr, what is the thing that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to seek? The pardon and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she said, Ya Rasulullah, if I meet Laylatul Qadr, if I catch Laylatul Qadr, what should my dua be? What dua should I make? And remember Aisha radiallahu anha, she was a scholar. She was a scholar of the religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa could have taught her any dua and she would have learned it, memorized it, understood it and applied it. He could have said, taught her any dua. But instead, what did he teach her? He said, if you meet Laylatul Qadr, 
then your dua should be Allahumma innaka afuun. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner. Tuhibbul afwa. You love to pardon. Fa'fu anni. So pardon me. The objective of Laylatul Qadr, the main dua we should be making is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us for all of our mistakes and our acts of worship, all of our sins and covers us with his forgiveness. One of the scholars, Yahya ibn Mu'adh al-Razi, rahimahullah, he said, لَيْسَ بِعَارِفٍ مَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ غَايَةُ أَمَلِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ الْعَفُ The person, this person, he does not know Allah. He is not close to Allah. If his greatest goal is something other than seeking the pardon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone has a goal other than seeking forgiveness from Allah and being pardoned for all his mistakes, this person does not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor does he know his own soul. Once one of the tabi'een, Mutarraf ibn Abdullah, rahimullah, he made dua and he said, Allahumma arda anna, O oh Allah be pleased with us. Fa'illam tarda anna, fa'fu anna. So if you're not pleased with us, then at least pardon us. If you're not happy with us, then at least pardon us. فَإِنَّ السَّيِّدَ يَعْفُ عَنْ عَبْدٍ وَهُوَ عَنْهُ غَيْرُ رَادٍ Because the master can forgive the slave even if he is not pleased with him. The master can pardon the slave even if he is angry with his actions. Even if he is not pleased with his actions. The next thing that we should do now that Ramadan has passed is to continue our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the worship of Allah doesn't just end in Ramadan. It's not only in Ramadan. But it is meant to continue throughout the year. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of Shawwal, is the Lord of this month, and the Lord of Dhul Qa'ada, and the Lord of all of the months, just like He is the Lord of Ramadan. Allah deserves to be worshipped. Deserves to be praised, deserves, deserves to be thanked in every month, not just in Ramadan. Once, some people were mentioned to Bishr al-Hafi, rahimullah. Bishr al-Hafi was a righteous man. And they described people to him, and it's as if they were describing us. They said, what do you say about people who only come to the masjid in Ramadan? Who only pray Qiyam al-Layl in Ramadan? Who only read the Quran in Ramadan. So he said, Bi'sa al qawmu. Qawmun la ya'arifun lillahi haqqan illa fi shahri Ramadan. How evil are people. How evil are a people that only recognize that Allah has a right on them in the month of Ramadan. How evil are those people who only worship Allah and give thanks to Allah only in Ramadan. And then he said, In salih the righteous one is the one who worships Allah throughout the year. The one who is devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just stop worshipping Allah in Ramadan but continues to worship Allah throughout the year. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made any time limit for worshipping Him. But rather, a Muslim is meant to worship Allah until the last second. Until the last moment, until the last breath, a Muslim is meant to continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Al-Hasan al-Basri, one of the famous scholars from the Tabi'een, he said, Inna Allah lam yaj'al li'amil al-mu'mini ajalan dun al-mawt. That Allah has not made any limit for worshipping or for doing good deeds for a believer except death. And then he recited the verse, Wa'bud rabbaka hatta ya'tiyaka al-yaqeen. And worship your Lord until the yaqeen comes to you. Yaqeen, the certainty here, it means death. Once, Imam al-Bayruni, rahimullah. Imam al-Bayruni, he was a scholar not just of the Islamic sciences, but he was a scholar of astronomy, of mathematics, of history. When he went to, with, to, with uh, Mahmoud al-Ghaznawi to India, he learned Sanskrit. And he started learning about the peoples of India and the religions of India and wrote a book about this. He spoke five different languages. When Imam al-Bayruni was on his deathbed, one of the scholars came to visit him. So al-Bayruni, he said to him, do you remember one day you were teaching me about the shares of the maternal grandmother, the shares of inheritance of the maternal grandmother. What was her share? So the scholar, he said, you want to ask me about this now? You're on your deathbed. You're on your way out. 
These are your last few moments in this world. You want to ask me about the small issue of fiqh? So Al-Bayruni, he said, Is it not better that I leave this world knowing this issue than that I leave it being ignorant of it? So the scholar, he taught him the shares. And then Al-Bayruni, he repeated it back. And then the scholar, he got up and he left. And as he was walking down the street, he heard the mourners announcing the death of Imam Al-Bayruni, rahimahullah. A Muslim is meant to worship Allah until the last second. A Muslim is meant to exert himself in pleasing his or her Lord until the last breath. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our deeds of Ramadan and to help us to continue to worship him in this month and throughout the rest of the year. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر من كل ذنب إن ربي غفور رحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه جمعين أما بعد to help us, to encourage us to continue our worship of Allah, the Prophet ﷺ recommended and advised the Muslims to fast in this month of Shawwal as well. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَهُ سِتَّمْ مِنْ شَوَّالْ كَانَ كَسِيَامَ الدَّهْرِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and then follows it up by fasting six days, any six days, they do not have to be consecutive. Whoever fasts six days from this month of Shawwal, then it's as if he has fasted his whole life. And this was to encourage the Muslims not to stop worshipping Allah at the end of Ramadan, but instead to continue the fasting, to continue their ibadah, even after the Eid, and even after the end of Ramadan. And fasting these six days of Shawwal has many benefits for the Muslim. From amongst the benefits of fasting these six days, is that it provides the Muslim the reward for fasting the whole year. And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous to his slaves that when we do good deeds, Allah never records it as a single good deed. The minimum that he records something is 10 good deeds or more than this. And for this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Siyamu Ramadan bi asharati ashur that the fasting of Ramadan is equal to the fasting of 10 months. We fast one month, but Allah records us as fasting 10 months. That leaves two months. وَالصِّيَامُ سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ بِشَهْرَيْنِ And fasting these six days, each day equal to 10 days, equals 60 days, which is two months. فَذَلِكَ الصِّيَامُ sana, And so that is the fasting of the whole year. So by a Muslim fasting only a few days in this month of Shawwal, a few days of this month at which, which we have reached the halfway point. We have two weeks left of the month. By a Muslim fasting these six days, with the fasting of Ramadan, he gets the reward of fasting the whole year. And likewise, fasting these days of Shawwal, these are like the Sunnah prayers that we pray before the Fard prayers. You know that there are the special prayers that the Prophet ﷺ would pray before the Fard or after the Fard. Like the two rak'ahs before Fajr or two rak'ahs after Maghrib, the Sunnah al Rawatib. So, likewise, the fasting in Sha'ban and the fasting in Shawwal, these are like the Rawatib that complement and complete the fasting of Ramadan. From amongst the benefits of fasting these six days is that it is a sign, inshallah, a good sign that the fasting of Ramadan has been accepted by Allah. The one that Allah makes easy for him or easy for her to fast these six days. This is a good sign, Bushra, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted the fasting of Ramadan. As the scholars, some of the scholars, they said, ثَوَابُ الْحَسَنَةِ الْحَسَنَةُ بَعْدَهَا That the reward of a good deed is being able to do another good deed after it. That the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and that He guides, He makes easy for them doing one good deed and then He makes easy for them doing more good deeds after it. And likewise, it is a bad sign. It is an evil, ominous sign for those who follow up the month of Ramadan with sin and disobedience of Allah. That they find themselves falling back into their bad habits, back into sin, back into disobedience of Allah. So let these Muslims take this opportunity to fast and continue to fast in Shawwal 
so that their fasting of Ramadan may also be accepted. But most of all, fasting these days of Shawwal is a sign of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we give thanks to Allah that He helped us in Ramadan by continuing to fast in this month of Shawwal. Some of the righteous before us, when they would get up for Qiyam al-Layl to pray in the night, if they were able to get up in the early hours of the morning and pray Qiyam al-Layl, then they would fast that day. They would wake up in the morning and they would start fasting to give thanks to Allah for being able to pray Qiyam al-Layl. Once the Prophet وسلم, he was praying Qiyam al-Layl and he used to pray so much that his shins would swell up. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, you pray this much and you were the one whose past and future sins were forgiven. So what did the Prophet وسلم, say? Afala akunu abadan shakura. Should I not be a grateful slave? That if Allah has given me this blessing of forgiveness, then I increase in my worship to show him gratitude for what he has given me. Once some people ask Wahib ibn al-Ward, what is the reward for making tawaf around the Kaaba? You know, when you go around the Kaaba seven times, what is the reward that we get for each circuit around the Kaaba? So Al-Wahib ibn al-Ward, rahimahullah, he said, لا تسألوا, لا تسألوا عن ثوابه. Don't ask about the reward for this deed or for that deed. ولكن, تس... ولكن سألوا ما الذي على من وفق لهذا العمل من الشكر. But instead ask what is due from the one who has been guided to do this deed from giving thanks to Allah and being guided by Allah to it. Don't ask what Allah will give you. But instead ask what you should be giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of thanks that he guided you to these acts of worship. If one of us was to get the news that he's gotten a raise, he's going to get a new car, he's going to get married, some good news from this dunya, he would fall on his knees and give shukr to Allah. He would make sujood shukr, giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing in this dunya. So how much more shukr should we give when it comes to the blessings in our religion? And for this reason, Salah bin Salim, rahimahullah, he said, "Kun li ni'mat Allah alayka fi dinik, ashkaru minka min ni'matihi alayka fi dunyak." Give more thanks, be more grateful to Allah for the blessings He gives you in His religion, than the gratitude you show in terms of His blessings in this dunya. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be from those who fast in this month and throughout the rest of the year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our many sins and to accept our good deeds, all of them completely. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa ashabi ajma'een. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa dammir a'ada al-Din wa ansur ibadak al-Muwahidin. Rabbana atina fi al-Dunya hasana wa fi al-Akhirati hasana wa qina a'adab al-Nar. Rabbana zhalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanukunan min al-Khasirin. Ameen wa akhiru da'awana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Qim al-Salaam.